thing with a song, a don't song. And making much ado about the don't is that popular artist of stage, screen and recording fame, Ronald Franco. I've trotted round the publishers with cutest of cantatas. Something's wrong here. What? Why, you ought to be here, I'll be there. Yes, of course. Give him clappers, will you? Thanks very much. Terrible. Uh, Ron Franco, scene four, take 56. Where shall I get this? Oh, I'll put it over there. <laughs> I've trotted round the publishers with cutest of cantatas, marching songs and hearty songs and all. And when I departed, I was one of those departers, wished I'd never had the cheek to call. They showed me correspondence, that's what made me depressed. 50,000 letters with the same request. Don't let's sing about the war. The whole thing's really such a bore. Let's sing of love or something similar, not about Goering, Hess or Himmler. Don't let's sing about the war. We've heard all the jokes before. Let's sing about our British sports who the willow wheels so long as we play cricket we have a side that never yields so long as leonard hutton bats so long as gracie feels don't let's sing about the war the other day 500 men with many older stagers i did my very best to entertain i sang a song with frightfully funny quips at sergeant majors and asked the boys to join in the refrain and you could hear a ribbon drop, there was so little noise, till the colonel turned and faced them and he said, Now, boys, don't let's sing about the war. The whole thing's really such a bore. I'd rather hear those Marx blighters, you know, Groucho and Harpo, and jokes about the old poo. Or Gestapo, don't let's sing about the war. We've heard all the jokes before. Forget that Lawrence may be right and Anna may be wrong. And instead of Tipperary and the way that's awfully long, let's have Roll Out the Barrel, Lady Astor's favourite song. But don't let's sing about the war. Well, now I've uh, got time to tell you one or two stories I heard at my mother's knees and other joints. Oh, the first one was rather funny. Uh, young elephants jumping about through the jungle, fully grown, uh, but very young, and they're jumping about. One of them falls down on his, falls down, and slides a few yards down a slight incline, knocking uh, half a dozen trees over on the way. And he's never been quite so near the ground before, and he sees a little thing moving, and he says, What are you? The little thing says, I'm a mouse. He says, oh, but aren't you small? The little mouse says, Yes, I've been very ill. <laughs> Ah, I, I, that was very funny, you see, because the mouse is comparing himself with other mice, not with elephants. Well, try this one. There's one of these barrage balloons going up, and, and the cable's going up, and the balloon itself is above a cloud, and, and a dear old lady comes up to the fellow who's putting up the cable and says, uh, uh, Excuse me, but is there anything at the end of that? And the man looks and says, Blimey, madam, if the right, this is the blue and Indian rope trick. Ah, that's not so good either, perhaps. Th then there was the, this is my, this is a good one, there's a, um, a doctor examining a patient for insurance and he's passed the usual test and he finds his parents lived to a decent old age and died natural deaths and he says, well, one or two more questions I want to ask, do you smoke? He says, no, never touched cigar, cigarette or pipe in my life. He said, are you married? He said, no. He said, do you drink? He said, no. He said, well, two bottles of whiskey a day. He said, what? He said, well, sometimes it's three and sometimes it's one, but it averages out at two bottles of whiskey a day. But don't you notice any ill effects from this heavy drinking? He said, no. He said, well, sometimes I go, <laughs> but I'm all right afterwards. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, I must prefer the elephant one myself.